The Vernier Hybrid motor has gained a lot of attention over the last couple of years, making it to be a perfect candidate for energy production. In theory, it would not need gear reduction, and it could be one of the most efficient motors for wind turbines or wave generators. Even though it seems like a complex design, it is actually three phase, and it has considerably more torque at low end when compared to its competitors. A single phase typically contains two wires, one hot and one neutral, and uses a single alternating voltage. It only generates an alternate field, but in a three phase, the currents are separated by 120 degrees. This means that there's more uniform torque and power efficiency. So when phase one is at its positive peak, phase two and three are in their negative. This allows the stream of power to flow more efficiently, and you can get about twice the amount of power compared to a single phase system. It is possible to go to higher phases, and there are some very special motors that can reach into the six or even nine. But the problem with these is that there's a diminishing return of economics. You're only gaining a little bit more power factor for an overwhelming amount of wire. So a three phase is typically what we consider a nominal and optimal design. An alternative way to gain more efficiency is through a synchronous design. And this basically is what it sounds like. The rotor is in synchronous speed with the current flowing through the stator. So instead of pushing and pulling magnetic fields, the whole assembly is locked in. And the advantage to this is that it will work at synchronous speed regardless of load variation. In translation, this means that you can have one of the most efficient motors in the world. As a side note, Toshiba has built one of the most powerful synchronous motors that superconducts. And it is basically a megawatt unit that is only a couple feet in length. Maybe not so applicable to reality though. Fortunately, the Vernier motor is a more realistic design. One may ask, well, what's with all these pulls? And the fact is, is that it actually uses three phases, but it's not your typical kind of three phase motor. The rotor is placed on the outside and a laminate steel housing with teeth interact with the stator. The two field harmonics are magnetically coupled through modulation with the flux modulator being the teeth themselves. There's a regular pattern of alignment and misalignment, and this allows the rotor to actually rotate. Once it gets through the third phase, the cycle begins all over again. And the advantage to this kind of machine is that it's scalable, so you can produce more torque with more segments. The inherent downside is that the faster the rotation, the less efficient the overall motor is. So this type of motor would be excellent for lower speed applications. For the past decade, the conventional wind turbine had a powertrain which consists of an induction or a synchronous generator, a converter, and a stage gearbox. The Vernier design is appealing because its magnetic gearing effect allows it to retain high torque with less volume and weight. In essence, it doesn't need a gearbox in the right application. This means that it can be lighter, maybe even possibly cheaper than a conventional wind turbine design. The latest designs are more situated for around 15 to 30 rotations a minute. So it can definitely be a potential candidate for larger megawatt units. This type of design can also be configured into a linear motor. You can kind of think of this as a radial motor disassembled and rolled out flat on your desk. There really is no essential change and you can have a three phase system which can alternate in each direction and it would be able to move back and forth two-dimensionally, but this is definitely more applicable to a generator system. One potential application could be for WaveSwain's module, and this device has a floater and a silo with pressurized air. The increase of hydrostatic pressure forces the floater down, and the Vernier linear motor can be used for direct energy conversion with this cylinder connected to it. In other words, it can act as a direct energy conversion generator. This machine is definitely appealing because it can be submerged up to 75 feet, and a single unit can be scaled up to a half a megawatt. So this kind of motor is very interesting. It's definitely got its niche kind of potential. It's not applicable to every situation out there, and it's not going to replace your three-phase synchronous motor in every application. But at the same time, it could be used in a megawatt turbine system, especially for wind power. It'll be interesting to see if it can be efficient as a linear generator. 
And I think there's a whole market of wave energy generation just waiting out there to be utilized. I think there was a few terawatts of potential energy in just in wave generation alone. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about this motor. Is it overly complex or is it actually useful in certain applications? Well, please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.